to heal a female nipple piercing or piercings. Yes, I'm going to go through my aftercare instructions that I give my clients when they come in to get pierced. Coming up next on Aftercare Instructions by a Piercer, episode number seven. So you should stick around. are new to the channel my name is Davo I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994 I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines Iowa inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo so when I speak to you these things I speak to you from a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years first off before we get into this let's talk about the fact that I'm recording this on December 14, 2020, if you've gotten conflicting information from your piercer, especially if this is far in the future, um, or conflicting information from me, talk to them about it. If it's different from, the, or different from this, there might be a reason for it. As the industry progresses, we learn more things. However, this is the most up-to-date information I have at this time. So I, I have a feeling that we'll still be taking care of piercings like this in the future. Now, uh, first off and foremost, when you get pierced, you should be given something in the vein of this thing. It should include instructions on how to take care of it, stuff you might need to pick up, what the jewelry size is, who did it, when it was done, with the average healing time, all that good information. On the inside, it should have instructions in covering care, aftercare, uh, also uh, cross-contamination prevention, jewelry, all kinds of fun stuff. But it should be a basic outline of what you need to know when you get pierced and how to take care of it. As far as product, things you need to pick up. The first thing and foremost is this stuff. Uh, I love this stuff. It's called Nelmeds. There's the piercing aftercare version, which is probably the best option, mainly because it comes out in a mist. So you just spray it directly on. This stuff will work. Uh, what it is is wound wash. You can find this stuff pretty much anywhere, um, like Walgreens, Walmart, Target. Any place that has a first aid aisle, they're going to have this or a version of it. When you look for saline, the things you want to look for is, first off, that it's sterile. The second thing being is that uh, there is no other additives in there. It should only contain water and sodium or salt. Uh, the percentage should be point or zero point nine percent sodium. The rest of it should be water. Also, it should probably be in a pressurized tan, can and sterile. Now, if it has all kinds of other things in there and a lot of chemical names that you can't understand, and you have any type of food allergies or other allergies, I would stay away from it. Also, it kind of depends on the product, but a lot of them don't have a shelf life. A very long thing is uh, if it's saline like contact solution and nostril sprays and etc that's not the same thing some of those do have additional additives mainly you want to look for sterile and that it has a correct percentage of sodium and nothing else now uh, the way you clean it if you're using the misting style and it feels comfortable just to spray it directly on there, just spray it directly on there. Let it stay in contact for anywhere from roughly 5 to 10 minutes to the point where it feels like it's melted away, any discharge or anything else. Then just wipe off the area, uh, kind of dab it uh, with a clean paper towel or a sterile piece of gauze sponge. If you're getting into the shower, you might as well just rinse it under running water. Works just as well. If you're using the wound wash or something that comes out in a squirt, and I swear you can hit, you can take an eye out with that stuff, you probably don't want to spray it directly under the piercing. Not only is it going to not feel great, but it's probably going to be damn messy. Um, so your best option is to spray it onto a clean paper towel or sterile piece of guy's sponge, and then apply it like a compress. Let it stay on there for about five to ten minutes and rinse or wipe it the same way. That you want to do twice daily for at least the next six months or until you stop seeing the discharge, collecting and depositing on the jewelry. The piercing oil is kind of indented or ingrown. When that tissue connects to the center, it pulls inward. Um, also, the jewelry will move fairly easily through the piercing. When in doubt, 
see your piercer. Have them take a look at it. Let them make the decision of whether or not it's healed or not, especially if you're nervous about it. Um, it doesn't take that much time out of our day, and we're happy to see the results of our work. So, And we're happy to go, hey, great job, or yeah, let's give it a couple more weeks just to be on the safe side or a couple more months. Now let's talk about cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Always handle it by the ends or the ball. The only time you need to have any contact with that piercing is when you're cleaning it and when you're checking the tightness of the balls, um, which I suggest doing regularly. They can come unscrewed on their own. They usually fall off at the worst possible time, and they do need to be checked occasionally. Rest of the time, leave it alone. Also, keep everybody else's germy, little, nasty fingers away from it. That means you. No oral contact or exchanging bodily fluids on near around the piercing until the piercing is healed. That means no mouth contact whatsoever or saliva contact. Don't lick your fingers and clean it. That's gross, and that can cause an infection. Keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. A way to get around constantly changing your bedding is put on a clean, soft, comfortable T-shirt before you go to bed. Um, kind of creates a layer. That way you don't have to change the sheets every single night. Do not submerge piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. Meaning. No swimming while it's healing. After it heals, you can swim all you want. But in the meantime, no water parks, water slides, wave pools, ocean, lakes, rivers, streams, puddles, kiddie pools, etc. Do not submerge the piercing in it. They are filled with microorganisms that are going to enter the piercing because it's an open wound and cause an infection. doesn't matter what you cover it with. doesn't matter how long you're in there. It's always a possibility. So the way to ensure that you don't get an infection is don't swim. That's simple. Just don't do it. So if you're considering getting this piercing done and you swim a lot, you might want to wait until when you don't swim a lot. Just saying. Do not sleep on the piercing. Uh, sleep on your side or your back. Avoid any trauma to the piercing. Be very cautious of the area. Try to isolate it as much as possible. Also, do not use harsh cleaners in products. Things like, well, oh, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, witch hazel, hibiclans, betadine, um, bactine. Ointments such as neosporin, bacitracin, zinc, etc. All of those things will probably lead to additional problems. And even if you are having an issue, it's all going to make it worse. They're too harsh or they cause additional issues. This does include the 800 home remedies that you've read about on the internet, on Reddit or Facebook or wherever you get your homegrown remedies. Things like tea tree oil. Um, emo oil, I'm still kind of on the fence on. I've never used it. I've heard great things about it, but at the same time, uh, yeah, no. I, you just need to use saline. If something occurs, and I'll get to that later, see your piercer before you start smearing things all over it because it's probably going to make it worse. Now, with abuse, that also involves not letting your partner handle the area. Let them know that this is the forbidden zone until it's healed. Jewelry. Leave that piece in until it's completely healed. After it's healed, you can take it out and replace another piece. However, you do want to leave something in it at all times for roughly the next two to three years, only taking out to replace. Understand, regardless of how long you've had the piercings, it is a long piercing through dense tissue. They can close very rapidly. If you like the piercings, you do want to leave something in it. Most reputable piercers will not charge to change the jewelry, and I do suggest taking advantage of that, at least for the first year or so after it heals. They can be a little tricky to change sometimes, especially depending on the jewelry. So it's best, if you can, see your piercer. Have them change it. Usually the jewelry is too large for the piercing, and that's on purpose. We want to allow that extra room for swelling. 
I, it's a good idea once it's healed to downsize to a shorter barbell if you had it done with barbells, which hopefully you did. Um, and this is just to kind of reduce the amount of contact or possibility of them getting caught on things. Um, if you do want to switch to rings, you have to understand the area that's inside the piercing needs to be as flat as possible, which means that you're going to have to go with larger rings than are needed. Uh, you probably would be best off to go see your piercer and have them size it for you. It just comes down to even after you've gone through all this work and the piercing is healed, putting something in there that drastically changes the shape of the piercing is going to cause issues in a healed piercing, including rejection um, and migration. What should you do if you feel like you contaminated the piercing? Let's say you made a mistake or you know somebody around you made a mistake. What I would suggest is taking a mild antibacterial liquid soap, something that doesn't contain any moisturizers, fragrances, or other additives. If that's not available, just regular hand soap should be fine. You just want to avoid anything that has a lot of stuff in it. Then you're going to rinse off the area under running water. Take the soap, squirt out a pearl drop in the palm of your hand, lather it up well so you're diluting it, gently apply it to the piercing area, let it stay in contact for roughly about 30 seconds, and then rinse under running water. The only time you need to do this is if, in fact, you know you've contaminated the area. One more thing on abuse. Do not move, shift, rotate, spin the jewelry during the healing process. There is absolutely no reason or benefit for this. It's actually going to prolong your healing period, increase the likelihood of infection, and possibly cause other issues. Now, what should you do if you think you have a problem? Contact your piercer or contact a medical professional. You know, doctor, PA, nurse, somebody who, who does medicine for a living. Two worst things you can do. Put off getting taken care of because it's only going to get worse, possibly turn systematic and spread, and be much more difficult to correct the longer you put off getting it taken care of. The first sign that you have issues, contact your piercer. If you can't get a hold of them, contact your doctor. It's important because the longer you put it off, the worse it's going to get. The other thing you shouldn't do is remove the jewelry. There's a misconception that if you take the jewelry out, the infection is going to go away and everything's just going to magically go back to normal. Sometimes that might be the case of bumps and other problems, but with infection, it creates a big risk to remove the jewelry. The reason for that is how your body heals infections and what happens when you take the jewelry out. Your body heals infections by pushing infected tissue and fluids out through the wound while replacing with healthy tissue below. When you remove the jewelry, which is the only thing keeping the two holes open, they can still shut possibly trapping that infected tissue and fluids inside your body, leading to an abscess or a cyst, which is probably going to require medical attention. If you leave the jewelry in, it allows a drainage point for that infection. It also usually makes it a little bit more treatable. So, in other words, if you think you have an infection, see your piercer. Don't remove the jewelry until either your piercer or your doctor tell you to. Other reactions, problems, of course contact your piercer, and they should make themselves available to you. Normal reactions, things you normally are going to see, uh, especially in the first three to five days, your body accepts the piercing get, and gets over the trauma of it. You're going to see things like redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness to the touch, inflammation, swelling. It's also not common to see a slight amount of bleeding off and on from three to five days. Usually, it's not really that noticeable. One final thing on jewelry and everything else, never put anything made of sterling in your nipples. Sterling, if it comes in contact with certain areas of the body, can cause silver poisoning. As it erodes, it leaks out silver salts, your body then absorbs it, and it can lead to a permanent marking or tattooing in the area, usually kind of a bluish black. It's permanent. The only way to remove it is to have it surgically removed. So be very cautious if you think they're... When you're buying jewelry for your nipples, uh, stay away from anything that's got silver in it. Go with titanium, 14 karat solid gold, or plated implant surgical stainless steel or glass. Nothing else. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much completely what I would tell you if you came in and got a piercing, uh, this particular piercing. If you found it edifying, useful, or what have you, give me a thumbs up. We like it when you like it. If you feel like I've missed something or you would like to share your experience of healing out a nipple piercing or you have a question about something, please comment. 
I usually answer them when I have time um, and continue to do that until I don't have time anymore. If you haven't subscribed, why the hell not? Hit that notification bell when you do it so you're notified every single time we post something, which is very often. That way you don't miss anything. You're in the know. If you like merch, you like t-shirts, you like swag, check out our merch store. There's a merch bar below. There's also a link in the description. Lots of great designs there. Lots of different colors, different types of uh, products you can buy for you or that person that you need to get a special gift for that likes piercing and tattooing. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Take care of your piercings. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.